For Christians, this is the Easter weekend when the resurrection of Christ is celebrated. Bishop Gerard P. Berge joins us in the studio. And Bishop Berge, this is at least as important as Christmas. Is, am I fair in saying that? Yeah, in fact, I would say that it's probably from a liturgical perspective, it's even more of more significance than Christmas. The, the resurrection, yes, of, of Christ. I, I read your Easter letter, and mm -hmm. your Easter letter talked about the movement of the disciples after Christ's death yes. back to Jerusalem. Yes. And the sense of defeat that they were feeling. And you mm -hmm. compared that sense of defeat to what a lot of us are feeling right now. Can you yes. explain? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, so the, 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 the apostles or disciples witnessed Christ's death and, and felt that he wasn't their Messiah, he wasn't their leader, he was just like everybody else. And so they were kind of leaving Jerusalem, distraught, upset, and then they encountered Jesus, don't recognize him, the risen Lord, on Easter Sunday morning. And uh, as he talks to them, something changes within them. And then it wasn't until they, it was mealtime, they, they sat down and he broke bread, their eyes were opened and they recognized it was Jesus, he vanished. But they said to one another, wow, our hearts are on fire, we gotta go back and tell everyone that he really is alive, what he was saying is true. So I think that's indicative of, of what life in general, but what we're going through right now. You know, we've been experiencing a lot of uh, uh, pain and, and we've had to give up so much because of the pandemic and we can feel very, very uh, depleted and disillusioned. Uh, and I think that Easter is that message of hope to say, yeah, there's always new life and we too will get through this and it will be better. Right now, the hope for many of us is the hope for that vaccine yes. to get out so that we can start to gather together for things like Easter. How difficult is it for your parishioners that not only are they not all able to come to church mm -hmm. to celebrate these milestones, but they're not able to gather together this weekend yeah. to acknowledge Easter? I, I think this is, is one of the most significant outcomes from COVID. I'm not talking about the, the actual medical condition or the physical impact it has on us, but I'm thinking mere, uh, mentally and spiritually. We're, we're designed to be together, to, to enjoy each other's company. And when we can't do that, it does affect a person's outlook. And, and it's very difficult for people not to gather as family, as friends. I think it happened at Christmas, so it's not, I think that was so difficult. I think people had hope that at least we can gather maybe for Easter, and now we can't do that. So I think it's just to encourage people to say, all right, we have to weather this storm, but there will be many opportunities. But yes, it is very difficult. Can I ask you, last Easter, you had to, the whole diocese really, had to do the services without anybody exactly. in the church. What is happening this year? Are we able to, mm -hmm. at most churches, have 30%? Yes, the, we're, since we're in the red category, it means uh, that, you know, at least uh, the Niagara area, uh, that we can have 30% capacity. Uh, of course, right at this moment, uh, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we could move to another color zone and that would re cut it in half to 15%. But the point is that at least this Easter, whether it's 30% or 15%, it's going to make a world of difference to actually have people uh, in the church who feel comfortable. Uh, and as I've always said, in all of our churches, we practice the, 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 the protocols. We try to create a safe environment. There's, there socially social distancing and and so we do pro provide a safe environment for those that are there but from my perspective it's going to be so wonderful to actually have some people in the church when we celebrate these significant liturgies can i ask about the health of the catholic church moving forward will people come back to church and what have donations to the church been like without people sure. dropping off their envelopes every mm -hmm. week well, first of all, the easiest one to answer, I, I am amazed at the generosity of people. I've, I've canvassed many of the, the priests and they're saying that, that they're getting by, that people are very kind and they're very generous. Uh, even though they're, they're not physically present, they will drop off their, their envelope of their support. Uh, they do it online, uh, direct deposit, things of that nature. Uh, some of the parishes are struggling a little bit, but, uh, but, but we're managing and, and thanks be to God and thanks be to the, to the generosity of parishioners. Uh, as for whether they will come back, I, I would say that that really is the, the number one question. We don't know. I, I, I hope so. Uh, once COVID is, as I said, in, in our rearview mirror, uh, I'm hoping that when people feel comfortable once again, they will return. But again, I, I don't know for sure whether that will happen. That is my hope and my prayer, but I really don't know. I, none of us know. It's so unpredictable. Yes. You mentioned that you're canvassing the priests about all of this. What is the mental health of the priests during this time? <laughs> Thank you, very, a very good question. I, I think that some of them, I've, I try to keep in contact when I can. Uh, I think uh, I probably was a little more in contact with them the first wave. 
I think the second wave, probably not as much. Uh, I think that by and large, they're coping. Uh, I try to encourage them to reach out to one another, to reach out to, to parishioners. Uh, you know, you can't do it physically, but at least you can be in contact through different social media outlets. Uh, and, and so that they, they are coping, but I think like everyone else, it's, it's a fine line. I think people are very close to the edge. As a leader in the Roman Catholic Diocese here, how do you help people make sense of the whole COVID-19 dilemma? I think that uh, for me, I think it's got to be a message of hope. Uh, I, in life, things happen that we have no control over. And you know, that, 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 that question that has been with us for, for so long, why, why do bad things happen to good people? I, I, I don't know why this is happening. I mean, ultimately, it is happening, and, and from a faith perspective, God is allowing it to happen. I can only hope that from this bad, good will come about. Not that you're happy that all this bad happened, but that good can come out, come out of it. I think we've seen examples where there have been good uh, coming out of this, uh, the, the, the altruism of, of people, those in, in the healthcare profession, how they have made the sacrifices. Uh, I think it's so easy to allow fear to overwhelm us and, and to prevent us, as I've said before, that sometimes we can be so afraid of dying that we're not living. And that's always been my concern, that you got to try to continue to live, again, within the, the parameters to try to be responsible. And so to see the, the selflessness of people who are not af afraid of what might happen to them, I'm sure they're very much concerned, but for a greater good, they do what they have to do. And I think that's especially evident in, in those who are in healthcare trying to bring healing to people. So to answer that, I, I just say to people, I, I don't have the answer, but all I know is that we're not alone and that God has not abandoned us that God is very much with us and that ultimately God will see us through this because I, I mean I enjoy history and I think you always have to look at the past. We've had moments like this before and we've got through it. I think that's the key. Sometimes we just live in the present moment and we forget there's a history. When you look back, we've had crises, problems, struggles, difficulties, but those that, that, uh, uh, that are strong enough to, to have hope and to believe we can get through this, we survive. Bishop Berge, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Happy Easter. Same to you. Thank you.